Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. Uh, now you may not have noticed, but last week I wasn't able to do a tip, and uh, the reason why is because amongst all the other travel I was doing, I headed down to LA last week. Uh, I was lucky enough to join the Toon Boom contingent to go to the Engineering Emmys, where we received an award for Storyboard Pro. Um, for those of you who don't know already, we've won Emmys now in um, categories both for Storyboard Pro and for Harmony. We won um, an Emmy for Harmony a number of years ago, and then we won an Emmy this year uh, for Storyboard Pro. So, as uh, you can imagine, we're quite excited about this um, at the office. And um, it's really nice to receive some recognition from the community about the work that we've been doing, and I want to just take a second to congratulate um, our team, and um, uh, particularly the engineering team for their creativity and um, you know diligence in continuing to work to produce wonderful products. And I'm very excited about the products that are going to come out this coming year, so I hope you guys will enjoy those too, even though I can't talk about them right now. So I thought in honor of Storyboard Pro's Emmy, I would do um, a couple of tips here on Storyboard Pro. I have done a few kind of introductory tips on Storyboard Pro, but I haven't really gone through this interface that much. And so I thought it would be nice um, to go through, and I'll start this week by just doing um, the storyboarding process, and then next week I'll do a tip on the animatic process. Um, and so I may or may not do an additional tip after that about exporting options, because that's one of those things that sometimes people like to know a bit more about. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So the, I'm just going to work here this week in Storyboard Pro 3D, just because that's the one that... Um, I tend to use the most often now because it's the sort of jam-packed version of Storyboard Pro, but um, all the stuff that I'm going to show you this week and next week can also be done in Storyboard Pro, um, the non-3D version. So basically, um, when you're working in Storyboard Pro, when you're in Storyboard Pro 2D, this view here is called the camera view. Um, in 3D, we had to break it up into two views, a stage view and a camera view. But um, for the purpose of doing regular storyboarding, then just, you know, you can treat this stage view as the camera view in Storyboard Pro. So basically you have a camera view, you have the ability here to see where the framing is on your camera, and then you can draw, you know, in this panel. And um, I like to always actually get started in one of these other views. So these are called workspaces, and um, right now I'm in the timeline workspace, but I usually like to start myself in the vertical workspace. And the reason that I like to start here is because you get a thumbnail image on the side there of what your panel looks like. And sometimes what happens is when you go digital, you get very detailed very fast because you're like, oh, I can zoom in, I can um, add all this detail, and then you forget to do the thumbnailing phase. So I also like to make use of my brush presets. I have a brush preset toolbar here showing at the top, but you've also got a brush presets view. And I'm starting to get to like this view more and more. So. You know, I have a rough brush that I've saved here that's just kind of a plain uh, vector brush, um, but you can also go in there and, and uh, make adjustments or make new ones to make a different kind of style of rough if you like. And so then I can just do that, and that's pretty much good enough here for, for my panel. Maybe I'll have this guy just waving, so I'm going to do just a mitten hand on that, on that wave to do a quick drawing. And so now that I've got this panel fleshed out, I can go and look at it in more detail on another board. But just um, to let you also know, you have some other tabs here that can be useful to use. All of these tabs in Storyboard Pro, you can move around. You can um, detach them by dragging them. You could uh, put it in a different place. When you see that, you can, um, like when you drag it, you'll see a little preview of where it's going to go, and you can put it there. And then if you want to get it back where it was before, you just drag it until you put it right back on top of where those other names are, the other tabs there, and then it's going to put it next to those other tabs. Um, so in the storyboard tab, here you have the ability to load in a script. And you can import a script from Final Draft if you are using Final Draft, but if you just have a plain text script, then you can import plain text uh, from here. And if you're working in Word or if you have a PDF file, you can always just copy and paste as well from there into this window. And then once you have the text in here, you can simply select the text and you can drag and drop it to the appropriate captions over there. So it's quite um, fast and easy to um, drag these things around. And if you are using Final Draft and you do tag these elements, it will use those tags to populate um, some preset panels to get you started, which is quite helpful as well. 
So let's say now I'm on this panel here and let's say I'd like to flesh this out in more detail. Now I can go to my drawing workspace and the drawing workspace as you can imagine is where you're going to spend the majority of your drawing time. So in this workspace I've actually prepared this so that I can see both the tool properties window and the color window at the same time. Let me show you how I did that because by default the color tab is actually at the top which is not so useful because you always have to switch between the tool properties view and the color view. But um, what you can do is you can select the color tab here and then just drag it down to the bottom of this view right here. And then we let go, it's going to pop it down there. And of course, just like before, you can choose to show the tool properties or the brush presets um, here. And you can see whichever one you're accustomed to using or that you like to use better. So I'll just continue using my rough brush preset here. But I can go into this panel now, and sorry, Camtasia slows down um, the actual drawing of it a little bit, so you might see a bit of lag. Um, but now if I just go in here, I can fill in a few, a few more details. I'm just going to do kind of a bit of a cartoony character today, and his neck is like, wow, very long. So let me make his neck a bit shorter, and I'll give him a collar there. So, you know, this is good enough for my drawing. I just want a basic drawing for this. And um, then what you can do is you can go and do a new um, layer on top of this. It's going to be your clean layer. So I can add a layer. And for the purposes of tracking, it's really nice also to rename the layer with the appropriate name of my character. So let's just call this guy Jack. So Jack now has a layer with his name on it. And then when I'm doing some kind of tracking later on, like if I want to export an, an Excel spreadsheet that tells me, you know, where all, or what elements are on each panel, then that means I have some useful information there instead of having information that's um, not true to the panel. Like if you just name everything panel A, B, and C, or layer A, B, and C rather, then um, you don't really have such an accurate... Um, representation of who or, or what is on that panel. So in order to make your life easier later on down the road, it is helpful to rename panels what they're supposed to be named there. And um, now I'll just throw in a quick uh, couple of lines on this drawing. I'm not going to do um, the best drawing in the world here, but just want to lay something in that I can work with. And um, let's see here. So let's just finish off with his hair.